This, this, this is a Tape Deck Podcast. Hello and welcome to Inside the Runner Studio. This is your host, Tom, and with me as always are Aaron, Michael, and Diana. Hello. 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 And we are joined today. We are honored to have our friend, Bill. Hi, Bill. Hola. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. Honored's a bit much, but uh, appreciate it. No, we always are honored (laughs) to see you, Bill. We love you. We're very excited. Yeah. (laughs) Did, uh, Did Bill witness hot tub coffee? Yeah, I was so there. He was I was there, there for hot tub okay, coffee. It, okay, it, I right. never laughed so hard in a while. That was great. In fact, I might have been stirring the pot a little bit to uh, keep the uh, complaining going on, too. <laughs> that doesn't sound like anything you would do, Bill. No, no, no. It's first time you for me. You are not a, no, no bigger. Not a pot star. No, I feel no. like by the time uh, Bill and Jen showed up at the pool, we were already like double fisting margaritas, so... Oh, they yeah. tried to catch up. Yeah, yeah. They we tried to catch the spiral. up. <laughs> but man, when well, it's forty-five dollars was... a drink, you better you got you can't go too fast. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no, uh, you we, cannot. We made that mistake, Bill. We we went that fast, and then we paid the price. <laughs> Literally, the paid the price. Uh, who who needs a mortgage? I mean, really, it's overrated. <laughs> true, true story. Oh uh, gosh. Oh All right, Bill. So, you know the format. We're going to ask you some running related questions, some non running related questions, um, and just get to know you a little bit more, even though I feel like we know you. But um, the before fans, we, the people. The, this is for the people. <laughs> <laughs> for Give the children. The fans what they want. <laughs> this is for Give your. the people what they want. Absolutely. Before we do that, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, name is Bill. From I uh, live down in Texas, near the D- Dallas area. Uh, married to beautiful wife Jennifer. Got uh, three children slash adults. <laughs> uh, lived here pretty much all my life. Have uh, d- started off as a teacher. Now I work for a major software company uh, in the United States. But uh, enjoy- just got it. I know it's about running, but I mean running's a kind of a, a part of my life. But uh, it's definitely brought a lot of joy over the last few years ever since I have gotten into that, even though not seriously, but into it. I feel like you say not serious, but like you guys just did Chicago Marathon. Like you do all these major <laughs> races. <laughs> we do make poor life choices at times. <laughs> I mean, I've, neither one of us have ever been fast. And I there I had these, these grand illusions when I first got into running back in the early 2000s, uh, you know, because the only, only running I ever knew before that, I was, I was a lineman in football. So you run 10 yards and you call it a day and you mm-hmm. start the next play. And the only time you're running is if you're in trouble or you're getting punished. And so when I started in the 2000s, I was, you know, I was still very heavy and, and uh, back then. And I had a lot of trouble running, but I tried and did okay. And then when I got serious about it around 2014, I had all these illusions. I'm going to run fast. I'm going to get a PR every race and I'm going to do this, even at Disney races, which was pretty darn stupid now that I yep. look back. I was trying to run it for time. <laughs> I was like, who does that? But then I've come to grips with, you know, it's not just about that. It's a lot of other benefits that come from running, the fun, the camaraderie, uh, the people that brings into your life, the sense of achievement. So Chicago, although it was, it was very slow, I'm just glad my watch battery lasted the whole race uh, as long <laughs> as I was out there with the heat. But it's still a sense of achievement at the end of the day. And so, yeah, we, Absolutely. and I think we've gotten to the point where we look for destination races too. And mm-hmm. we look for not mm-hmm. just, although we'll do an occasional local race here and there, but usually it's either for charity or something fun, usually at a brewery or something like that. Yeah. Shocker. Um, <laughs> but also looking at new places to go. And Chicago is one of those places we love the town. We've always, it's a bucket list race. It's one of the six majors. So, you know, we signed up for it a couple of years ago and then because of COVID and uh, everything got pushed out a year. But uh, I think, I said before the race I was retiring from marathons, but we'll see. Yeah. I was just going to mention that. Bill (laughs) said that that was going to be his last ever marathon. Mm. And uh, I'd like to ask you, Bill, as our first question, uh, is that that a true statement still? Mm. As we sit (laughs) here today, (laughs) as we sit here today, it is, I don't have one scheduled, but (laughs) we have talked about, and maybe this is, we're rolling the dice here, that if there was one major we'd love to do, it'd be New York. And uh, yeah. one I, of that the one best. is 
so hard to get into from out of state. It is mm-hmm. like it's... you're almost better better odds winning the lottery, actual lottery, than getting into yeah, that lottery. Yeah, but it's so good if you ever get a chance. That would, That's top, what we've heard from friends that have run it. They're like, it's their favorite. I loved it. It was yeah. absolutely the most amazing experience. Uh, probably ever. So if we get in, <laughs> maybe we're we're also you know pretty easy to be influenced. If Dopey twenty three, when that comes uh-huh. around, I think that's the anniversary <laughs> year. If I'm not mistaken, yep. Yep. is twenty three. We're all doing it. We're, we're all doing it. <sighs> Tom needs poor to life choices. All doing it. It's going to be my more, first poor dopey. life choices. <laughs> that Thomas is yeah, going to be your be first. My first. When's your dopey. first full? First it, Dopey. That may be my first full. There may be a chance that during training for Dopey, we sign up for a full. I know Diane is planning to sign up for a full. I, I don't have the courage yet, but I am planning to train for Dopey. I'm sure do, Diane do has got way. a great hydration strategy she can share oh, with yeah. you prior Just to the mistakes. race. Oh, oh, we are hydrated. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> I want I want to be better trained this time, so I, I'm not as miserable, and I'm happy and not sad when I start drinking. <laughs> yeah, and that is the key, finishing where you don't hate life at the end. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. All right. That's the litmus test. Cool. So let's jump into our questions, and um, our first one is, and I think I knew this, but maybe not, um, trails or roads and Why? If you would have asked me that through two years ago, I'd have said roads. Uh, I say I know this is a cop out. I say both because I think they both serve a purpose. Um, mm. But we've gotten into a couple of trail runs lately. In fact, went out for a run with a local group a couple weeks ago and loved it. Uh, to me, it's easier on your body, easier on your knee when you don't fall, mm-hmm. uh, easier on your <laughs> knees and everything else. But I also kind of like the vibe around trail racing that it's not. It's a very supportive. Not that running. The street running community is not supportive, but it people aren't so hung up on their time. It's all about yeah. finishing a distance. It's all yep. about enjoying the journey. It's not about the destination. And that's a that's something I don't want to get too deep, but that's something about life that I kind of embrace as well. Is it's not all about the destination because we all got that destination. It's enjoying mm-hmm. that journey on the way there. And uh, I, I kind of dig that about the, the trail racing scene. And so, but I still enjoy road racing. It's just not marathons right now. I don't enjoy. <laughs> yeah. You're absolutely hit the nail on the head there. I love that. Um, what is and the your snacks preferred... are good too at trail races too. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 yeah, I know. It's like buffet marathon or uh, goo uh, or real like food. food. Yeah, give me real yeah. food every time. Buffets of food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. What is your preferred race distance and why? I think I heard this on one of your recent pod uh, inside the runner studios and i agree 10k i think 10k is a nice distance 5k you kind of feel like you got all you know dressed drove across town got there and you spent more time getting there than you did running the race Mm, 10k is a reasonable distance to be trained for even the half i I would say 10k or half the full training just sucks and and Mm -hmm. chicago the timing of it was you know early october first week of october which means the bulk of your heavy miles are in the summer texas summer which is just oh. stupid. And I'm somebody who has to run outside. I cannot run on a treadmill. God bless you, Diana. I know you said you ran <laughs> nine miles on a treadmill. I can't do that. Um, but yeah, so I was getting up at three in the morning or four in the morning to go out and try to Oof. get as many miles as I could. Well, you try to do it before the sun comes up because when the sun comes up, it's just all bets are off at that point. In yeah. Texas. Is so. Texas a dry heat or which is whatever? Is Texas a dry <laughs> heat or a uh, wet heat? Uh, I'd say it's not as, as humid. I won't use the word moist. Oh, I think I kind of just did. I know that's a pet peeve in this yeah. podcast. <laughs> Embrace the moist. Oh, that sounds wrong. Um, oh. <laughs> but uh, here we're not as humid as Houston is down near the coast. But mm-hmm. te- okay. up here in North Texas, it's been pretty humid. Like I'll get up okay. in the morning. I'm a, well, I don't know if this question's coming here. Spoiler alert. But I'm a morning runner. Uh, and a lot of times I would get up during the summer, it'd be, you know, this is 6 a.m., 5 a.m., and it's already 75 and 90% Ooh. humidity. It's hot. Okay, oh. okay. Just, so you yeah. do get, I sweat you do get that my humidity. Shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's pretty humid. Uh, this is one where I know Tom would say no, but uh, would you run a race without a medal? I th- yes, and I have. I would say it, it for charity, if there was support on the course, because a lot of times we'll look for races that give you, if we know we got to do a 10-mile run or, you know, six-mile run, why not do one for a race where there's support out there? You don't have to carry everything with you. But 
uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say we weren't motivated by the bling a little bit. And uh, <laughs> so, I, yeah. Amen. Yeah. I know you guys did Little Rock, right? Oh, God, yeah, with the, the, the medals as big as a with the like dinner a plate. Of, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say record, but I'm showing my age there. Everybody here knows, you know, MP3s <laughs> or CDs, but, you know, the old vinyl records and stuff about that big. Mm-hmm. It's a massive medal. Yeah, that's I, on my bucket list. For I covet that, that. I covet that medal so bad. And I, and I think we've talked about this, but for the for the purposes of your audience, and uh, you know, the, it's a great first time marathon as well mm-hmm. at Little Rock because they you can leave two hours early before the race starts. They have an early wave, so you get up to eight hours to finish the marathon, which takes a lot of the stress off of it. Now the weather's brutal usually at that time of year in Little Rock. So I'm not on their tourism board, but it's 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 a night very friendly <laughs> for first timers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Bill, mm-hmm. and, and I do know the answer to this one, but <laughs> have you ever worn a costume for a race <laughs> and or worn matching outfits with friends? Yes and yes. I've done both, and they're both a lot of fun. And I, if, once again, if you had asked me, you know, before I started running, would that ever happen? I would say, hell no. You know, that's not something <laughs> I would do, but it is something in terms of, it started with the Disney races with uh, wearing the costume. And I think the first time I ever wore one was uh, the one that I wear every year now, which is Buddy the Elf. For yes. any Christmas uh, races, I'll always wear that. And people still comment, call me Buddy today because of that. But <laughs> yeah, we've done several group costumes that have been a lot of fun. Uh, probably What's the one favorite? that was the, the worst to run in. I won't say worst. It was a lot of fun, but uh, was the Maui costume. That I was going to say that was my favorite oh. one you've worn. <laughs> It, it was a lot what of fun, and it favorite? got a lot of got a lot of reactions. But I I I in or not envy, but I have a lot of respect for those with long hair because I oh. certainly, as you can tell by the video, <laughs> don't have that. And trying to run in the wind with long hair blowing in your face is uh, was a challenge, but it was a lot of fun in that costume. What one's your favorite costume? Oh Lord, there's been there's been a few. I, Maui was one I I came to mind when I was thinking of costumes. Uh, I, okay. The tattoo shirt, the wig, and all that stuff mm-hmm. was just, and it got a lot of, it got a lot of good reactions from people in the crowd. So I'll roll okay. with that one. Yeah, or I'm the leprechaun see... at Shamrock. Ah, I was just gonna dang say, dang it, dang it, the <laughs> leprechaun. Yeah, I brought a, uh, just as a leprechaun, which I'm bringing this year. So uh, okay. I'll be wearing that for the 8K again. But I'll bring another uh, pot full of uh, chocolate gold coins to hand out. Uh, I'm excited to see whatever you guys have planned for Space Coast. Oh yeah. We went, yeah, we went for this. Nothing. Oh, yeah, we'll say, but we'll surprise. Not really a big surprise, but yeah, definitely space themed on our shirts we're going to be wearing. So. I I had a I had a feeling because I know Jennifer said that you guys already had a plan. So year four, Big Bang series. So we're going out. We're trying to go out uh, finishing that medal. Talk about the bling, Thomas. So they do four year series. So this is year four. So we had to go to get the to get the big spaceman medal. Oh God, are we going to have to go down four more times? I. Five more. Oh because god! Because this is the end. This is the end of year four, and then you start another four-year series after this. So this, just think of this as a uh, shakeout run before just the four-year series. Up. Just a warm-up. Yeah. Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, speaking of a shakeout, have you ever had a running injury? Uh, yeah, probably the the worst I had back when I was, as I joked about earlier, when I was running Disney races for time. Uh, went out way too fast in uh, what was it? The Star Wars light side half marathon at Disneyland. And when this is back when I was running for time, went out way too fast and ended up um, uh, tearing my hamstring, my left hamstring on the run. So yeah, that happening at mile Mm. two wasn't really a lot of fun either, but I, I I tried I walked a little bit and could walk. I luckily had gotten ahead a little bit. And this is back when, you know, I'd, I'd gotten a decent run for the first couple of miles and then just tried to walk as best I could, but it hurt like crazy. And then I was, you know, contemplating, am I going to be able to finish and all this stuff? And and then Jennifer came up, caught up to me. And then we just kind of, I just kind of, I found I could jog if I just ran slow, not run fast and didn't walk because walking hurt. I was able to finish the race, but that was the longest 11 miles to, to get to the finish oh line with it, and then until I got home and had it looked at, but. Mm. Yeah, that was probably my worst I had was the, the torn hamstring. But I finished. I got the medal, Thomas. You'd be proud. <laughs> I, that's all Oof. that matters. That, <laughs> all that matters. More than hell. That's, <laughs> so you've done, you've done a light and dark side, right? So you've, yes. got, the, you've got the challenge, the Millennium Falcon The kettle medal. run. Yeah, or the Kessel run. Sorry, not kettle. <laughs> kettle corn. I was thinking of popcorn. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, that's fine. <laughs> that's, that's another one that I think is, you know, highly coveted. 
Yeah, we had to do that. All right, we're going to move into some random questions. I feel like these were made for you. Who who Uh-oh. randomized these? Uh, who is your favorite dis- Disney character, live action or animated? I don't know if this counts, but may, uh, maybe Wally. Uh, I think hmm. he's he definitely he's, counts. He loves the simple the things in one. life. Uh, he's a Aww. romantic at heart, and he can kind of find fun and joy in wherever he is, or whatever he has around him at that point. So. No. Uh, that's someone I, I can really, even though that movie I think has the longest stretch with no words being spoken, it's mm-hmm. like 45 minutes or something. Yeah. That movie still hits me, you know, right here every time we watch it. I love that movie. So great. Yeah. Maybe the best picks are, in yeah. my opinion. But between that and uh, up, up is another favorite of mine. Oh uh, yeah. If you could have an unlimited supply of one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? And I assume money is not one of the things that we could pick because that just makes it easy. You could pick money. Uh, you could pick money. But money doesn't always buy you happiness. Um, and it's got to be a tangible item. I went, but I was joking about money because I thought about that in, in, in terms of uh, what it would be. <laughs> but uh, the jokes, the, 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 the sarcastic part of me said, I'll bet an unlimited supply of bourbon. Because then if money doesn't buy you happiness, you won't care. <laughs> you have what money buys because you're happy anyway. So yep. give me some of bourbon, had... guys. So give me some good bourbon. Love that. We have had um, intangible items listed before on oh this. for sure yeah yeah so it could I'm be thinking something of all intangible. the stuff you say if you're in the 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 former miss america pageants whatever oh i want world peace or i want unlimited <laughs> yeah. health and happiness for the world and i didn't figure you want anything <laughs> mushy like that because you wanted honesty not that i think one of uh the best ones is uh that we got was time unlimited time that's a good one too yeah that yeah. is the one thing yeah. that uh, there is it is finite yeah yeah, yeah. What is your favorite brewery slash winery slash cidery? Really, really, uh, we found one in uh, near Fredericksburg, Texas, down near Austin. And we were down there a few months ago. And there's a brewery we found out down there called Allstat. And they've got two or three different, uh, and their brewery is amazing. It looks like a big German castle when you pull up, and it's got a beer garden and all these different, it's really like a destination. We said we got to find a debt. We Jennifer and I actually joked when we were there. We said we got to find a race around here to get everybody here because that brewery yeah. was just that much fun. But mm. yeah, they've got a couple, two or three that I really enjoy. And you, unfortunately, you can only get them there, so you have to make a trip to Fredericksburg. But I think that's the one that stands out to me right now. Oh, nice. I love Austin. That's where I did my bachelorette because there are so many breweries, but we didn't go there. Ah, mm. yeah, uh-huh. yeah, definitely. It's a yeah. cool place. And Bill, full disclosure. I, I skipped a question, so whoever's oh. next. You just went next, to the, you saw a brewery, and that's where your head went. So I'm scrolling <laughs> on my phone, and for some reason, I got all, Bill, you do something to me. I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm very nervous right now, and I feel like we should have gotten all these feelings out in the pool. <laughs> in the pool. <laughs> it's we fine. tried. There Diana's was just too many just people go there. Back. Yeah. Oh, gosh, Diana, oh, just go all back right. one. Oh, I'll go back one. All right. Oh, if you could have any talent you currently do not have, what would it be? I know, I know, singing has been mentioned a lot, but really for me, it's playing guitar. I, mm. I, because I don't like drawing it. I don't want attention like singing. I think I feel like people are staring at you. I'd rather just have something that's melodic to me that I can go and make good music that sounds good. And I've tried taking guitar lessons over the years, but with big sausage fingers it's not the best for uh playing a, a guitar so i was like bass guitar i was like no that's not as much fun so i'll just uh i'll just enjoy those that can do it but i would love to be able to play like slash is my favorite guitar player and mm. I, I could just sit and listen nice. to some of his solos forever wishing i could play it that well nice all right the zombie apocalypse is coming bill who are the three people you want on your team Oh Lord, three. That's tough when I come from a family of uh, for four of the people in my family. So I you're feel really like making that's not make... fair. Yeah, that's not fair. <laughs> I know. I... Also, All right, kids, you best... had a good shot. Yeah. That may... they may not be the best people for your team. I told Tom to that's leave true. me for dead. I would be terrible <laughs> that's on a zombie true. box. Let's see. Okay, yes. good. Okay, good. I, was, I didn't want to go to the, tell the kids. Okay, we're going to play our own version of Squid Games here, and whoever yeah. wins, you get to come on the, oh. with us on the apocalypse. So. Nice. Um. Obviously, I mean, Jennifer, I, you know, I would want with me on that on that journey. I started, you know, preparation for zombies. So you need you need an arsenal. You need uh, you need uh, 
you need some way to defend yourself or to attack. So I think we have a, we have a common friend named Jackie. I think would be oh uh, yes. would be a oh, great yeah. person her, to have as part of that because I feel like skills. we would have the equipment needed. <laughs> and the third person I pick somebody who is just slower than us. Yeah. And that would be the third person. Oh, good one. That's a good Thank one. you good for one. the invitation to your zombie team. You don't have to be the fastest, just don't be the slowest. So that's it. Yeah. Oh, man. I couldn't well, think of a third, she, sorry. He, he is, he's savage. Wow. <laughs> hey, zombies. When zombies are on, oh, it's all fair. That's true. That's true. That's, funny. that's true. Speaking of zombies, uh, these are the James Lipton Memorial questions. Um, <laughs> Lord. Rest in peace, James. Uh, we, we honor you with these questions because we enjoyed your show. Uh, so, what is your favorite word? Community. Oh, Ooh, that's, that's an excellent that's one. <laughs> what is your that... least favorite word? No. I, in many contexts there, the word no frustrates me at times. Um, I think, I, I, like I said, I don't want to get too deep, but when I hear people say, and I talk about this with people at work and friends, like, you know, when I hear I can't, it's like, I can't or I won't, is because we put so many limitations on ourselves on what we can and can't do. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you take a step back and look at it, you can. And so uh, the word no frustrates me at times. It's like, really? Because I, I do it to myself. I put myself through that same mental Olympics or gymnastics when I, when I think about that, but yeah, I don't like, I also don't like being told no. So <laughs> for the bratty side of me, doesn't like that aspect of it either. Okay, Bill, what turns you on? Thomas, you already know this. Uh -oh. <laughs> cool... No, I'm just kidding. I know. Uh, <laughs> remember that time in the pool? No. Uh, I, I think genuineness when somebody is act is a hundred percent genuine, good or bad, but you know the, who they are and they, who they are, who they are all the time. Um, I respect that and I admire that. And that to me is a, that's something that really makes somebody, a, a, you know, that I want to be friends with them or I want to be connected with them when I get that sense that they're, they're, they're absolutely sincere. They're absolutely genuine. And what turns you off? Narcissism, I think is one for me. Mm -hmm. I think if, uh, and you, and you, we've all had, you know, you go around people and you feel like, oh, this is, and no matter what the situation is, it gets made to be about them. And they don't let other people live their moment or have their joy. Um, that frustrates me when I when I hear that. Yeah. So I, I I enjoy being around people that can be truly happy for other people and what they do and their victories, without looking for at it through a lens of how do I make this associated to me or how do I say that I've done this too or so forth. Let people have their moment. Let people have their spotlight. Don't feel like you constantly need to pull the a portion of that spotlight to yourself. It is rare, but yeah, I completely agree. And yet he's married to me. <laughs> well, a lot of times, a lot of times when that happens, it's, well, it's, the it's, couple it's, dynamic is completely different. We're not talking about that. <laughs> no, no, no. But when when people when people do that, sometimes they're interjecting a story about themselves so they can relate an experience to your Agreed. experience. And and I feel like there's some there's some validity to that. But mm -hmm. but you're right. You're right. Like. If it's, I'm more if speaking it's, something systemic where it's every time every that time. something yeah. gets brought up, they yeah. relate. And, and I get the total because everybody wants to connect in some way. I totally get that, Tom. Right. It's right. just it's more about the person who it's systemic. They do it every time somebody brings up something. Or they one up. Oof, yeah, or one, one up uppers. is even worse. Yeah. yeah. God, one uppers. <laughs> All right. Uh, what sound or noise do you love? One of them, God, I'm going to sound terrible saying this because I said, what do I like an unlimited supply of? You know that sound that the cork makes when you pull it out of a bourbon bottle yep. and it goes, yes. makes that noise? <laughs> That's a pleasant noise. And, and I also brought props. I think another pleasant noise from my childhood, I'm not sure if they still use it or not, is. Ah, oh, come on, phone. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, I love that anthem when it would come on TV for Monday Night Football when I was a kid. Now you get every game on TV. It's not as big of a thrill, but I have such fond yeah, memories. And I yeah. love, absolutely love football. Just hearing that sound, I would get jazzed up for the game, and it could be two terrible teams playing, yeah, but I would awesome. still get jazzed up. What sound or noise do you hate? When you are dog ass tired and the alarm's going off. That noise on my iPhone with the God. alarm going off. I, if yes. I didn't value not wanting to buy another phone, I would toss it across the room every Ugh, time. God. I, just, I hate when you just need another, you know, 15 minutes to four hours of sleep. 
It's and hearing <laughs> that alarm go off, it's yes. the worst. Michael's goes off at 5 a.m. every morning because he get or it's better than 4:30. 4, 4, 4, 4, 4:55 every morning. Yeah, 4:55. And yeah, I don't have to be awake until like yeah. I mean, I don't have to be awake until like 6:30. You know, every day, every time I want to reach across the bed and throw that phone across <laughs> out the window. <laughs> Maybe it's your I curse from Bur- it's your curse from Bird in Hand that time. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. All right. What is your favorite curse word? I would say to, I, it's a simple one, but it, it is so useful. And I would say I, I love that word. Uh, if you're editing this out to keep it PG, the S word, uh, to do some creative <laughs> editing there. But to me, it's the duct tape of cuss words. I mean, you can express, you know, happiness. You can say, oh, yes. And, you know, you're upset or surprised like, oh, it's or angry, whatever. It's that. multi-purpose. Yeah. You can use it for so many different scenarios. And underrated. And I think people say it more than they think they say it. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you can get away with it more places. <laughs> like the F-bomb yes. draws attention. So if you're trying to yeah. sneak something under the radar, probably not the right word to use. But I feel like <laughs> mm. with the S word, you, you could sneak that through sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? And I think it's kind of a hobby. I haven't done it in a while, but it, it's kind of a hobby I kind of gravitated towards. I've always wanted to do something creative. And, mm-hmm. you know, I wanted to create something, whether that's in music or video or something. It, it's something that I've always wanted to do. And uh, even when I was younger, I used to, to create songs and music. And I will not, I don't have them anymore, but I would not play them because I didn't sing. As I mentioned earlier, I don't like singing, but I may have rapped. So there is that. Oh my god. And I have a re- I have a studio recording somewhere that hopefully burns somewhere um <laughs> of a couple of songs, but I've always enjoyed music and video when video came along later with video production and even some of our racing videos. That was a labor of love. I enjoy working with editing software and pulling stuff together and trying to create, you know, different stuff and so if I could and I'm I'm old, you know, I'm older in life now, so changing careers is really tough at this point. But if I had a choice and I had an option to go into that, I would love doing something like that. Awesome. Nice. Let me find out that there's a rap demo of Bill no. a- out there somewhere. <laughs> oh, if you, if you find it, you ain't going to be able to play it on the air. I can promise you that. So. <laughs> this is back in the days that the two live crew was a big influence, so I'll just leave it at that. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> Wow. <laughs> I'm older now and more mature ish. And what profession would you not like to do? Sorry, I had a cat that I'm trying no, to stop from pulling wires. <laughs> uh I would not like to be the person responsible for emptying the porta potties after flying pig weekend. Just think oh, of all that chili. Oh. All that chili. Oh. That chili. Oh. So that's a job I don't that was want. Very, that was very specific. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I thought about the porta potty thing. That's a job I would never want because we saw a bank of them a couple weeks ago. And I started thinking about that and I was like, God, can you imagine after all that Skyline chili, whatever that stuff is oh, gosh. in Ohio? Oh, yeah. They, they call oh. chili. Yeah. No. Uh, it's not chili. It's no. not Get chili. Out of here. I agree. Yeah. It's not chili. Bill, I get to ask you our final question. But before I do, thank you very much for being with us. No, thank you for having me. I feel honored to be here. All right, so Bill, if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Uh, congrats, you fooled them. <laughs> they let me in. One. I got by the gate somehow. I yeah. love nice, it. nice. I like so it. So good. So good. Do you have any this has uh, been fun. parting? Thank you. It's been so. Do you have fun. any parting words of wisdom for uh, the listeners, the crew, the crowds, your fans? No, I... Thanks again for having me on. I mean, like I said, I feel honored to be on here. I, I love these episodes when y'all do them. I think it's a great way of connecting with the community and finding out more about the people. I know I've several people I've listened to I, I have never met in my life, but you you walk away feeling like you know a little bit about them. And I think it's a great a great tool to kind of get to know the people that are following you week in and week out and that uh, you may run into from time to time at a race. So no, I, I love this. I, and I'm anxious to hear more in the future as they come out, but thank you for, I appreciate y'all having me on. Well, we loved having you. Yep. It was so great. And depending Tom. on when this comes out, we'll either see you at 
Space Coast, or we had a great mm-hmm. time seeing you at Space Coast. <laughs> we had a great time seeing you at Space Coast. That's right. Like we're in a time heist right now here. Yeah, yeah we are. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, we had a great time seeing you at Space Coast. Photos had by all. We oh. went to Disney after. We went to Epcot. It was fun. It was great, we yeah. had a great time. The fun was had by all. There was coffee in the hot tub and everything. Yeah. <laughs> Just the best. Just the best. <laughs> all, right. All, right, all right, Bill. Bill. Well, I know you're a big Star Wars fan, so may the Force be with you. And also with you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.